Atrial fibrillation is the most common cardiac dysrhythmia that we see in clinical practice. It may cause a patient to be breathless, to have a loss of exercise tolerance, to feel palpitations, but most importantly, it puts them at a five-fold increased risk of stroke. It was a really a big shock. The average person, I would assume, like myself, would not realise just how potentially dangerous it can be to have an irregular heartbeat. I think there are gaps in the patients where we detect atrial fibrillation because detection of atrial fibrillation isn't easy. Atrial fibrillation can be a paroxysmal condition, it can come and go, and if you're not looking for it at the time that it's present, it could be easy to miss it. Atrial fibrillation is a, a very important condition and it has a number of complications. It increases the risk of, of death roughly 1.5 fold, but the most feared complication is stroke and it increases the risk of having an ischemic stroke five times. Atrial fibrillation causes roughly 20 to 30% of the ischemic strokes that we see. We also pick up another burden of atrial fibrillation in our subsequent investigations. Interestingly, atrial fibrillation doesn't always cause symptoms in our patients, and it's also important to recognise that the risk of the complications that concern us aren't actually related to whether or not the patient suffers symptoms. I was getting ready for bed about 11.30 in the evening, and suddenly, without any warning, felt my left arm become really heavy from the elbow down. It seemed as though it had three or four times its normal weight, and I'd lost control of the movement of it, so I was, for instance, missing my ear. If I was trying to scratch my ear. So I realised that this was something problematic. Um, my mum had had a stroke and I'd seen her have that, so I realised that loss of power in the limb, loss of control was quite a dangerous sign. In health, we have efficient contraction around the heart, the left atrium contracts, and we have smooth flow of blood. In the condition of atrial fibrillation, the electrical conduction is disorganised. The atrium fibrillates, but there's no contraction. And we remember from basic pathophysiology, if you have stasis of blood, you have the potential for thrombus. Thrombus forms in the heart, and then in some situations that thrombus breaks off and travels into the systemic circulation. When that happens, in about 90% of cases it travels to the brain, causes ischemia and causes stroke. Atrial fibrillation related strokes are by and large more severe than the other types of ischemic stroke that we see. To give some examples, some studies have shown that they have far higher rates of disability, far lower rates of returning to independent living at one year, and in fact in one study, 80% of patients with an AF-related stroke had died by five years. I had been diagnosed literally six days before the stroke. Um, I had had a couple of quite major chest infections which had really floored me and um, at the second consultation with my GP he took my pulse and remarked that it seemed a bit irregular because as a lay person I didn't think anything of that. Now I now know that's much more serious than I realised at that point so they did say to me that over the next 10 year period there was a 1 in 20 percent chance that I could potentially have a stroke but of course I wasn't anticipating it would be six days later. Whichever metric you want to look at an AF related stroke causes more initial neurological disability, it's more likely to cause mortality, stay in hospital is longer, and it's more likely to be associated with institutional care. The reasons for that aren't entirely clear, but we believe it may be related to the formation of collaterals. In a large vessel stroke, there's a state of chronic ischemia and the brain can compensate for that by forming collaterals. In atrial fibrillation, the very sudden onset of the thrombus, the brain hasn't had time to compensate for that. Atrial fibrillation strokes cause disabling stroke, but the good news is we have effective treatments for that. Thromboprophylaxis with an anticoagulant stops that initial formation of the thrombus in, in, in the heart, and so you don't then run the risk of systemic embolisation. Thromboprophylaxis prevents systemic embolism by preventing the formation of the thrombus in the first place. We have the fibrillating heart, there's the substrate for forming fr thrombus, particularly around the left atrial appendage, but by keeping the blood thin, if you like, you don't have that, that nidus and you don't have that thrombus forming. I think it's really important that the condition is diagnosed quickly. Um, I didn't really realise the potential ramifications of having an irregular heartbeat, but I had no idea just how potentially lethal it could be for the heartbeat to be irregular. It's important to be 
on a medication that reduces the risk because I certainly don't want anything like this ever to happen again. I would like to live for a long time. Hi, my name is Kelvin and I work on the team that creates the content that you've just seen, Medscape TV. If you like the content and want to see more, click on the button to the right and it'll take you to the full series.